So this booklet is going to look at simplifying thirds and also expanding brackets and then simplifying thirds if they're involved. So first thing we need to think about is uh, square numbers. So 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, uh, 64, 81, um, and 100, 121, 144, and so on. These are our square numbers. Now, these are helpful with thirds because if we get any of these numbers, we know, for example, let's take 36. We know that the square root of 36 is 6. So a third is any number inside a square root where we cannot simplify it any further. So to simplify it, we are looking for square number factors. So any of these numbers, if they go in or bigger to 75, that's going to be helpful. So hopefully you can see that 25 is a factor of 75. So I'm going to rewrite this and I'm going to say that this is the square root of 25 multiplied by the square root of 3. 25 times 3 is 75, so root 25 times root 3 is root 75. Now the reason we have done this is because we know that the square root of, five, of 25 sorry, is 5. So we can rewrite that bit as an actual integer, as a whole number. So the square root of 25 is 5, and the root 3 just has to stay the same. So root 75 is the same as 5 lots of root 3. And we've got as much as we can change to be a whole number. So 5 root 3 is going to be my answer for that one. Let's have a look at the next one. And we've got the square root of 200. Now for the square root of 200, we are looking for any square numbers that go in as factors. And we know that root 100 root 2 would make root 200. 100 is a square number. Notice that we're always putting that square number first because the square number becomes an actual integer and the same thing here. So root 100 becomes 10, so it's 10 root 2. We can't do anything with the root 2, that needs to stay as it is. Okay, next one, root 48. Now 4 is a square number that goes into 48, but also 16 is a square number which goes in, and we always want to use the biggest number that we can. So this is going to be root 16 times root 3. The square root of 16 is 4, so this is 4 lots of root 3. Notice again we put that square number first, and then the other number that just was needed to multiply with it afterwards. Okay, next one. And I've got 3 lots of root 20. Now, the 3, let's worry about that after. It's just 3 lots of root 20. I'm going to take root 20 and think, are there any square numbers that go into 20? Yep, we've got 4. So this is going to be 3 lots of root 4, root 5. So I'm just worrying about this root 20 bit for now. That becomes root 4 times root 5. The square root of 4 is 2. So that becomes 2. The root 5 has to stay as it is. And we've got three lots of that. So three lots of two root five is six lots of root five. I've just got three lots of this. And so three lots of two root five is six root five. Okay, question number five. And we're going to expand and simplify. So to expand and simplify, we're doing the same as we would normally. The first term times the first term. The first term times the second term. The second term times the first term. And the second term times the second term. So root 2 times root 2. When we times thirds together, we can just times it and keep it inside a third. So root 2 times root 2 becomes root 4. But we know the square root of 4 is 2. So we have this rule where we know that if I have a third, let's say root a, and I times it by a, the same third, root a, it just gives you a. It's almost like squaring a square root. So it times it by itself, and it just becomes that number. So root 2 times root 2 is just 2. Then I've got root 2 times 5, which is 5 lots of root 2. The whole number goes first. And then I've got 3 lots of root 2, which is 3 root 2. And then I've got 3 times 5, which is 15. And then I can collect together any like terms. 2 and 15 makes 17. And then 5 root 2 add 3 root 2 is 8 root 2. So my final answer is 17 add 8 root 2. They're not like terms, I can't put them together. So that is my final answer. And it's okay to write it the other way around. 8 root 2 add 17 is completely fine as well. Okay, next one. And again, we're going to do 3 times 3, which is 9. 3 lots of root 5 is 3 root 5. 
And then I've got minus root 5 times 3. Now a negative times a positive is a negative. We're still going to put the whole number out the front. So it's minus 3 lots of root 5. And then root 5 times root 5 we saw above. It's root 25 which is just 5. And because I've got a negative times a positive here, it's going to be minus 5. I can then look at the 9. Take away 5 which is 4. And I've got 3 root 5. Take away 3 root 5 which is just nothing. So this answer actually just becomes 4. Now this is quite interesting. Notice that the brackets were the same, but one was a negative and one was a positive. And when we come on and do more difficult thirds, when we're rationalising, that's going to be helpful. OK, question number 7. I've got root 8 times root 2, which is root 16. We can time thirds together. Root 8 times minus 3, which is minus 3 root 8. 2 lots of root 2, which is plus 2 root 2, and 2 times minus 3, which is minus 6. Now, the square root of 16 is just 4. We've got minus 3 root 8. Now, minus 3 root 8, we want to think about this root 8 carefully because we know that the square root of 8 is the same as root 4 root 2. It's got a square number that goes into it. And the square root of 4 is 2, so this is actually 2 root 2, and we want to simplify it wherever we can, even if it doesn't explicitly say to do that. So this is minus 3 lots of 2 root 2, add 2 root 2, minus 6. Now 4 take away 6 is minus 2. This here becomes minus 6 lots of root 2, because I can times the 3 and the 2 together add 2 root 2. So my final answer for this question is minus 2 minus 4 root 2 because I'm at minus 6 root 2 and I'm adding 2 root 2 and I can add those and think about it on a number line because they both had root 2. If it was different sides we wouldn't necessarily be able to add them or take them away to become one term. Okay question number 8 and I've got root 7 add 1 all squared. Now when we square a bracket we know we write that bracket out twice. So root 7 add 1 times another root 7 add 1. Root 7 times root 7, we looked at this, we've said that root 7 times root 7 is root 49, but the square root of 49 is just 7. Root 7 times 1 is one lot of root 7 and I would just write root 7. One lot of root 7 is another root 7 and 1 times 1 is 1. So altogether I've got 8 coming from this part and this part, and I've got root 7 add another root 7, which is 2 root 7. And that's your answer. Can't simplify any more. That's correct. OK, question number 9, and we're doing the same thing. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times minus root 2 is minus 2 root 2. Root 2 times 5 is add 5 root 2. And root 2 times minus root 2 is minus 2. It's a positive times a negative, and we know when we times a third by itself, it just becomes the number. 10 take away 2 is 8. And then I've got minus 2 root 2, add 5 root 2. Thinking about my number line, that's going to come up to positive 3 root 2. So we can see there that A was 8 and B was 3. OK, next one. 5 times root 3 is 5 root 3. 5 times negative 3 is minus 15. Minus root 12 times root 3, that's minus root 36. And minus root 12 times minus 3, a negative times a negative is a positive, so plus 3 root 12. Now, thinking about root 36, we know that that is 6. So I can make that take away 6. So 5 root 3 take away 15, minus 6, and then this part we also need to do something to this. I know that the square root of 12, 12 has a square number factor of 4. So I'm going to change that to be root 4, root 3. So root 12 is 2 root 3, because that's the square root of 4. And so I'm going to change this to be plus 3 lots of 2 root 3. So writing that out again, I've got 5 root 3, Minus 15 take away 6 more is minus 21. And then we know that this part is 6 lots of root 3. So 5 root 3 add 6 root 3 is 11 root 3 minus 21. So A was negative 21. 
and B was 11. Okay, question 11, slightly more difficult because we've got brackets to do twice. So I'm going to write out the first bit first, write at root 3, add 1, times another root 3, add 1, add. And then I've got root 3 minus 1 times root 3 minus 1. Expanding these out, root 3 times root 3 is 3. Add root 3, add root 3, add 1. And I'm going to leave that in brackets and I'll worry about it afterwards. Here again, root 3 times root 3 is 3. Root 3 times minus 1 is minus root 3. Minus 1 times root 3 is minus root 3. And minus 1 times minus 1 is a plus 1. So all together in this bracket, I've got 4 add 2 root 3. And I'm adding 4 minus 2 root 3. 4 add 4 is 8. And I've got plus 2 root 3 adding minus 2 root 3, which would be nothing. So 8 is my final answer on that one. Okay, question 11. And we've got a really similar thing here, but slightly more challenging. 2 root 5 minus 3 times another 2 root 5 minus 3. And then take away 2 add root 5, 2 add root 5. When we're squaring a bracket, we're writing that bracket out twice. 2 root 5 times 2 root 5. Now I'm going to do the 2 times the 2 which is 4, and the root 5 times the root 5 is 5. So 4 times 5, so that's just going to be 20. In fact, let's just write 20. So I've done 2 times 2, and root 5 times root 5, which is just 4 times 5, which is 20. Then I've got 2 root 5 times minus 3, which is minus 6 root 5. Then I've got minus 3 times 2 root 5, which is another minus 6 root 5. And minus 3 times minus 3, which is plus 9 putting that in brackets and taking away the second um, lot of brackets. So 2 times 2 is 4. I've got add 2 root 5, add another 2 root 5, and then we know root 5 times root 5 is 5. So this becomes 29 minus 12 root 5 minus 9 add 4 root 5. Now be really careful, and this is why I've left it in brackets, we are taking away everything in the second bracket. So 29 take away 9 is 20. And then I've got minus 12 root 5 take away 4 root 5. So minus 12 root 5 take away 4 root 5 is going to be minus 16 root 5. And that would be my final answer. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to film more videos to help you.